This is where we're staying in Colorado Springs. This is Jody's um, aunt's, no, Jody's cousin's. I was getting mixed up. Jody's cousin's house um, in Colorado Springs. It's pretty nice little area. I think this is the older part of town where the original houses were built. This house in particular was built 1910, which is a craftsman house, which is the same as what we had in San Diego. Um, although this is much nicer condition. This is original, still got a lot of original woodwork, so it's always nice to see that. Quick pan of the street. It seems like quite a nice little spot. We're just about to head down to um, Ace Hardware of all places, which is a regular haunt for me when we were in San Diego. A couple of little jobs in the house I've seen that I'd like to help her out with. Uh, Two-way lighting that's not working and um, found in the bathroom is really noisy and there's a door that's super sticky. So little things that I don't mind doing and I quite enjoy when I'm on, even when I'm on holiday, doing little fix-its. Um, anyway, that's, that's, that's what I like. So uh, we'll hopefully take you on a little bit more of a journey, things that we do while we're here on our USA break. We're here for three weeks and we're not going to be in Colorado Springs for more than a couple of days. Oh, it gets windy, I don't know if that wind is annoying you or not. And then we'll be going down to Santa Fe and um, then we'll be picking up an RV in uh, Albuquerque for an eight day trip around the Grand Canyon, Painted Desert, um, Suaru National Park, I think it's called. So yeah, we're gonna have a little trip and then back to Santa Fe for a few more days and then back up here to Colorado Springs and then we'll drive north to Denver, which is about an hour and a half away to catch our flight home. Anyway, see you later. It's been a really nice day here actually in Colorado Springs and um, I'm sitting out on Grandpa's porch. It's pretty nice. It's fairly early in the morning. It's a little bit of a cool breeze, but it's nice and sunny. Anyway, I was going to just do a quick update on the, the repairs here. Um, I did mention it yesterday in the video that there was a few things around the house, but I sorted those, and they essentially came down to the two-way light switching in the hallway. I'll show you a picture of that. There's a switch at the bottom of the stairs. And there's a switch at the top of the stairs. And they're supposed to turn the upstairs and downstairs lights on at the same time, but from two different locations. But the lower switch was only turning the lights on and off when the upper switch was in a certain position. And that's a typical wiring fault or a broken wire and I was hoping it wasn't a broken wire. I had to pick up a little multimeter from uh, Lowe's to be able to just figure out where the hot or the live conductor was and uh, which way the, the switches were configured so I used continuity just to work out which was the common terminal which was L1 and L2. I've done a little diagram here of the two-way lighting setup in this house. There are a few different um, ways of setting of wiring a two-way uh, lighting circuit and two-way meaning that there's uh, two uh, switches that operate one or more lights. So you can uh, turn the lights on from uh, different locations. So typically in a house it's you have one in the hallway a switch in the hallway and then a switch at the top of the stairs or on the landing and um, you can operate the upstairs or downstairs or both lights from those positions. So what we have in this house is a light at the top of the stairs, a light at the bottom of the stairs and a switch at the top of the stairs and a switch at the bottom of the stairs. So this is the switch position and there are three terminals on the switch. This is the connector between the terminals. So this this switch is in this uh, the switch in this position. Uh, there's conductivity between this terminal here and this one here, and then when you flick the switch, that bar moves up to there, and then you have conductivity between this uh, conductor and this conductor here, and, and essentially you have the same thing over here. So it's quite a simple system, and then between the two switches are uh, these two conductors. 
Uh, on this particular house, none of these were labelled as you would kind of expect of the age of this house. And you're not sure which cable actually goes to which position. So you take the switch off the wall and all you see is three conductors disappearing into the wall behind. Um, but what I pretty quickly ascertained is that at this lower switch position there was a permanent live and and at this switch position this was going off to the light so that was fairly easy to uh, figure that out now this is the so <clears throat> essentially the you can pretty much figure out how this works just by looking at this diagram so you have power or your hot conductor coming in here uh, if the switch is in that position there then you, this is now hot or live going upstairs to that switch the light at this particular point is not on because there's no pathway to, to bring power up to the light. So that this particular setup, the light would not be on. Now, if you move this switch to this position, all of a sudden now you have the, the hot or live conductor here. This is live across here. And then you've got a live supply to the, to the light and then continues on to the second light. So both lights will come on. And you've got neutrals at the lights, which you obviously need for uh, for the lights to actually illuminate. If if you leave it in this position, and then this one, you turn this one, uh, move this switch position, which is at the top of the stairs, then you can see that you have your hot coming in here. All this is hot or live, and then if that was moved to that position, then that would also turn the lights on. So you can figure out by switching these uh, how that how the lights come on and off. Now, this is a little bit different in the States to, this is a sort of typical switch that you'd find in the States, quite different to the, what we're used to in the UK, but essentially the same thing. You have three uh, terminals, and one of them is this terminal here, which we call the common, and then the other two are what we call strappers, or, or line one and line two. So what had happened in, in the house here is that these had been switched the wrong way round. So the, these terminals, so this live was on there and that strapper was on there. So the, the problem was that the lights would, would, would come on and off from this position if this was in a certain position. And then if this was not in that position, this switch did nothing. It would not turn the lights on or off. It, the lights were you know, just not able to be controlled. And that's that's symptomatic of these being in the wrong locations. So I figured out which one was what had happened. Well, essentially what what had happened was that this was the old the, the, the original switch that was on the wall. This was a this was line one, this was line two or strappers, and this was the common. So this terminal here is this one here. The switch was changed at some point because it probably wore out. And the new switch, the setup of the terminals was different. So instead of this being the common terminal, on the new switch, this was now the common terminal. This one here is this one here. And whoever changed the switch literally took the cable that was from this terminal, the cable that was from this terminal, the cable that was from this terminal, and put it identically visually so it looked looked exactly the same on the new switch. But of course the new switch operates in a different way and it messed up the lighting uh, switching system. Anyway, it's now corrected and uh, it works fine. So it's quite a simple fix, but unless you have a little voltmeter or a current tester, or a, not a current tester, uh, you can detect uh, continuity. And these switches are not not late these switches are not labeled up so you need a little continuity or a battery in a bulb to be able to figure out which of these two are which of which one of these three is the common to the other two anyway i hope that hasn't caused major confusion it's it is a pretty simple system but it's a mistake that many people make when they're messing with these switches and um, drawing it out makes it much much easier there is another way of wiring this, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, and that is to have all three conductors between the two switches. And then at one location, you have a, a live in and then a switch live out. But that's for another day. Anyway, I figured out which one was which. And it so happens that the switch was just wired incorrectly. And it simply it came down to the fact that I think the switch was changed. The new switch had 
um, terminals that are in the same location, same physical locations on the switch, but internally they operate differently. So the common conductor or the common terminal was in a different place on the new switch. And that's a, it was a really easy fix once you'd figured out, once I'd figured out which conductor was doing what. So that was the upstairs and downstairs two-way lighting uh, switching fixed and that was quite a nice uh, that's quite satisfactory because often it can be a broken cable somewhere and that can either be impossible to find or just not worth the amount of time and effort it takes to find it uh, the fan in the bathroom was super super noisy like it just was really really noisy and there's a picture of that I'll show you slightly different from the UK fans that we have I managed actually to take the internals of the fan out. There's a big V8 going by, I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, I managed to take the internals of the fan out and found a set of internals in, again, in the local hardware store. It weren't, wasn't exactly, the, it didn't fit exactly the, the shaft that the uh, fan actually fits on was too long, so it was hitting a part of the, um, of the casing. I haven't got a photo of that because I've put it all back together now, but essentially I managed to alter the bracket to pull it further away from the casing and that all went together well, so that fan works nicely now too. What else did I do? Oh, the front gate. So the front gate was swinging on its hinges and had a brick to keep it closed. I put a spring on, one of those sort of gate springs on from Lowe's, but well, it lasted one whole night and then the next morning it had been windy through the night, uh, but it was broken. So went back to Lowe's, got a refund, and then put in a screen door closer. And I've got a photo of that right there. And that um, screen door closer just seems to work much better how it will stand up to the weather I don't know but it should be okay because they don't get horrendous rains or anything here so that should work out okay uh, oh and then there was a sticking door that I just needed to move the hinge slightly uh, put some packers behind the hinge just to bring the top of the door away from the frame because it was catching I think that was it yeah, but a few small jobs and uh, Nadine, which is Jody's cousin, was over the moon. And uh, I just get a little lift every time I fix something that's broken. Well, you know me, that's why, I'm, that's why I call the channel Tink Time, because I like to tinker with stuff. So even when you're on holiday, I think it's, uh, it means a lot to me. I'm, I, I just can't really laze about not doing very much, and I get bored with looking around certain places. So if I can keep my interest up by fixing something or other or making something work again then I enjoy it. That's probably why I enjoy going us taking out the motorhome and it's probably why I enjoy having older cars and uh, an older motorhome is because there's always something that you can do to improve it so I think that's a big plus in my books. Anyway I'll do some more video a bit later on um, don't really want to show you around the whole house here it's not my house so uh, it's Nadine's and she's in the process of doing it up but she's doing a really nice job of it and it's been absolute it's been a real um, pleasure really to stay here and just to have this home base it's really relaxing and had a nice cooked breakfast this morning so that's all a real plus anyway um, I'll keep the uh, the sort of holiday um, or vacation vlog going and um, you posted on where we're up to. Cheers.